hello, this is, um, I literally just told Stephanie and Emmy when they're practicing, just pretend like the camera isn't there, but I am going to address the audience when we first start. Uh, and I, I appreciate Emmy and Stephanie so much for being uh, brave and, and agreeing to uh, allow this uh, lesson to be filmed for you guys. Um, I, I uh, you know, last week we practiced and it wasn't filmed. We just did it over Zoom. And I will admit that for me as a teacher, um, teaching over Zoom is very challenging because I want to reach through and adjust you. You know, I want to re and, and in the Mysore room, that's part of the uh, parampara, the energy exchange is that the teacher's hands actually are touching your body and actually are moving your body into a different patterning. And that's the one disadvantage of Zoom is that I can't reach through the screen and adjust you. And so I have to rely on verbal, a lot of verbal cues to teach students to adjust themselves. Um, as I've said before, there are going to be some things in your practice that you are not going to be able to break through by yourself. You're going to have to have the intervention of an outside force moving your body. And that's because each and every one of us have blind spots and have blind spots to patternings, right? And so um, that is why I highly recommend everyone have a teacher. Um, but again, if you can't find a teacher, then this is the next best thing. Um, I don't want that to defer anyone from at least starting a practice. Um, and so I, I also wanted to put this them up practicing because I think that there's a lot of, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I have been in this yoga world for over a decade, you know, in an, every six days a week in a shala. And so my knowledge of what to expect in a practice is very different than someone who's never been in a Mysore room before. And when, so if I were to film myself doing the primary series and put it up on YouTube, it would literally in the Ashtanga world be considered a demonstration. And I want students to understand that Again, these series, the six series of Ashtanga Yoga are not meant to be conquered. They're not, it's not a checklist. You're constantly ebbing and flowing back through different series with, within what's going, because for example, if you're practicing in second series, which is nerve therapy, and you're going through a divorce or you're going through a huge move or, you know, something very big is happening in your life that's already triggering your nervous system. At that moment, the teacher would tell you to only do primary series because primary series is grounding, right? So there's a deeper intelligence here. And so I really want to show everybody who maybe has a misunderstanding of what to expect from themselves in the practice, what real practices look like. It, again, I'm, I'm serious. It takes about 10 years to work through primary series. And even then you're still not done. There's always things to learn. I'm still learning. There's always things to learn. Um, and I don't want students to feel like that they have to get the jump back and jump through right away. That's ridiculous. And that's your ego. Okay. Because that's not, we're not, you're, I want to really just stress this. You're not in the Mysore room. You are not a gymnast. You are not a performer. Okay. You're not a dancing monkey. Is that what they say? Like, I'm not your dancing monkey. Like you're not, that's not what you are. You are a yoga student. That's all. And this practice, it's like when we did worksheets at school, this practice is your worksheet, right? We didn't always do worksheets and get it all right, you know, hundred percent all the time, right? We'd have to go back and correct, go back and correct. Okay. So I wanted to show, and I'm so grateful that Stephanie and Emmy have agreed to do this to show you guys what it actually looks like. Now, this is going to look a little bit different again from a Mysore room because I'm not there to work with them individually in their space, touching their bodies, moving their bodies. Okay. I am going to be teaching them in a variation of what we would call a lead class, but this is not how Mysore is taught is not taught in lead, but because we I'm not there, we can't do Mysore. And so, um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. If, if that doesn't make sense, I am again on my community tab, there's videos of Mysore practices, what it looks like in a Mysore room. And, um, it is the traditional way of practice period, point blank, end of story. Um, in Iyengar a tradition, they call it open practice. That is traditionally how this is done. These lead classes that you see in the vinyasa flow world are not traditional. That's not what's done in India. And that makes sense to me because Mysore is so personal. It's where the teacher really becomes a teacher and really works with individuals. Like you're going to see, there are going to be some things I'm going to tell Emmy to do that I'm not going to tell Stephanie to do. And sometimes in a lead class, the teacher will give a note and everyone will do it, but that note is really for one person. 
And so we're in mice where we get that individual attention because none of us have the same karma. None of us have the same issues to work on. We're all individual snowflakes in the world, you know? And so, um, and so lead classes traditionally are the more advanced classes. You have to be invited to them. What do I mean by that? When I teach, a, when I teach lead classes and when, you know, any Ashtanga teacher teaches a lead class, they're just counting. There's no direction given because the students already know what to do. They've already been and all. We only do one lead class a week and that's on Fridays. And all week, the students have been like manhandled and um, adjusted in Mysore. And so they're sore, they're tired. So they're good not to be adjusted. It's just a way for them to move with the count and reground themselves before their, their rest day. And uh, I will say too, so as far as like the moving meditation, which Emmy and I got into in our conversation yesterday, um, the moving meditation in Mysore, you're doing a private meditation. It's just you. In a lead class, you're doing a collective meditation. And so you don't jump the count. You're moving at the count with everybody else. It's all collectively at the same time, moving energy, whereas in my sort, it's individual. All right, that might not make sense now, but the more you guys get into these practices, um, <laughs> don't fear Mysore. Um, whenever I teach beginner courses, I always have people who are terrified to come to Mysore. Mysore is literally the only all levels class out there. And it's where you learn. And I always tell the students, like, after they, for some reason, people think they have to come in and perform. Again, you're not a performer. You're not a performer. You're a student. That's why we call it a shala. Um, I know a lot of um, yoga places accidentally or uneducatedly or ignorantly, they'll call their, their, their um, place of yoga practice a studio. And I, I think I know where that came from. Uh, back in the like 60s, 70s, when uh, Americans were going over to India and learning Ashtanga, basically, if you look at pictures from Woodstock, the rock concert, they're doing, they're doing yoga, they're doing Ashtanga, they're doing the primary series. So that's what they originally brought to America was this practice. Now, because we teach so early in the mornings, where do you think these people who were given permission to teach in the 60s and 70s were finding locations to rent that early in the morning to teach? with an empty space, a big empty room, dance studios. And so that's where I think people accidentally started calling a place to practice yoga a studio is because they initially were renting morning spaces and morning times from dance studios because no dancers in there at four o'clock in the morning. The owner of the business probably enjoyed having extra income in from rent and they could use the space, teach their students and be out by the time the dancers were coming in. So um, a, a traditional place of practice is called a shala, which is a school. And so I want everybody to think that you're going to a school. You're not going to a studio. You're not trying out. You're not auditioning for anything. You're going to a school. And you don't go to school when you know everything. What's the fun in that? What's the fun of going to school if you know everything? Right? You're going there to be taught. So don't be intimidated by anything in that shala. I, as someone who practices an advanced level of asana, advanced level of asana, I'm telling you, we're not, nobody's watching you in the room except for the teacher. No other student is watching you. They're too busy focused on their own practice. They're not paying attention to you. So you, with that, you can have the freedom to fuck up all you want. Uh, as I tell my students in beginner courses, for most of your yoga uh, career, your lifetime, it's going to be a flop shop. It's going to be the hot mess express. It's going to be a shit show. And um, I always tell the students, I always say this at Cindy Shala, ugly yoga is the best kind of yoga. Because that's where it's interesting. Well, we're going to show that today. Pretty yoga is not interesting. Pretty yoga, they've worked through the shit. They've, it's clean. They've worked through it. That's, it's not interesting at that point. Right? Ugly yoga is interesting. That's the best kind. And most people have an ugly yoga practice. Most people do because they're working through their shit. And the body is a manifestation of the emotional thought and mind, all that kind of stuff. So with that being said, I do want to answer one quick question a student had about yoga mats. Um, so I recommend my, the mat I recommend always is the Manduka mat. Now Mandukas um, are fairly expensive. Um, they're like $100 a pop. However, they have a lifetime warranty. So um, if you are someone who's buying the cheap mats from like Target, those are going to wear down very 
quickly. And so would you rather have uh, spend $20 three times a year? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's going to end up being more expensive if you just want to get the more expensive Manduka mattress. They sell Mandukas on Amazon. I've seen yeah. them on Amazon. And I'm actually going to put a link to the Manduka. I've, I've worked with Manduka before. Well, years ago, I was director of yoga for Wellness Centers of America. So we we, we sold Mandukas because that was my, I only sell what I recommend. And, um, and I, I, they're an incredible company. They, if you have, if you get a mat, there's an issue with it. They will send you a new one. No, no questions asked. They're an incredible company. The Mandukas were created specifically for Ashtanga yoga specifically. So they're, they're tough. They take, they can take a lot of, um, beating up <laughs> as it were. Um, and, uh, the, another mat people tend to use is what is called a jade mat. That's another very nice mat. I'm not a fan of jade mats for Ashtanga because there's latex in the jade mat. I'm allergic to latex. So jade mats make my hand and feet swell up. Um, But they also, the latex will cause balling in the mat. And so it wears through very quickly. And so for Ashtanga, I would absolutely 100% recommend a Manduka mat. Um, I will show you my mat here. Uh, This mat is about 20 years old, actually. It's just a black mat, and I'll show you um, how thick it is. It's a thick mat. Like, there's a thicker, a thickness to it, right? It's very sturdy, and um, I actually only clean my mats because at, the more you practice, the more you're going to only want to practice on your own mat because it's got your prana on it. It's got your sweat, your prana. It's, the mat becomes a very sacred thing to each individual person. Their, their mat becomes very sacred to them. I only clean my mat uh, after I get back from India. Other than that, my mat smells awful, but it's my smell. <laughs> it's my grind. It's kind of like those cooking. I don't know. I'm not a cook. Uh, what's the pots you don't clean? Oh, cast, cast iron. iron. Cast iron. There you go. You can tell I'm not, I'm not a domestic diva when it comes to the kitchen. So um, it's kind of like a cast iron. You're, you want to get it grittier. Now, um, as far as sweat is concerned, you absolutely 100% need to be sweating in your yoga practice. That's your heat. That's your tapas. Okay. That's the fire. As my, my teacher's book, he talks about when they clean gold, they boil the gold so that they can, so the impurities rise to the top and they can wipe the impurities away. That is your sweat. That's your body detoxing. Now, with that being said, when you first start practicing, it's going to be a lot harder to generate sweat. People who are very fit tend to sweat very quickly and profusely. Okay. And um, so, so with that being said, the more and more and more and more you practice, the more and more and more and more you're going to sweat. Now, um, and again, we, we like that. If, If I have a student that's not getting sweaty, I'm telling them to speed it up. Get that heart going, get that blood pumping. Okay. Uh, now, with that being said, in the Shala in India, we cannot come into the Shala without a binding towel and without a carpet. Now, what do I mean by carpet? Well, this is my carpet, one of my carpets. It's an actual carpet that I put on my mat. It's a literal carpet. It's actually still sweaty because I used it this morning. Uh, it's a literal carpet. You can see the sweat on it. See that beautiful sweat? That's my sweat right there <laughs> on the carpet. Um, so this is a literal carpet. And we order our carpets in from India. Um, and basically what's going to happen is, especially when you get to the jump back, jump through series, is if you are sweating profusely, it is going to turn into a slip and slide on your mat. And so for me, I don't start my practice with my carpet on my mat. But when I get really sweaty... I will put the carpet on my mat to absorb that sweat. Okay, binding towels. What do I mean by a binding towel? This is a binding towel. Yep, Stephanie's got one. These are from India. Now, I don't use my binding towel for actual binding purposes. And I'm going to show today how you can use a binding towel with Stephanie and Emily because, because I can bind. I can bind all the posture, so I don't need that for that purpose. So why do I then have a binding towel? Well, this is for the teacher. So like if I'm in my practice and I'm sweating profusely and the teacher comes around to move my body or when I go around to adjust a student's body when they're sweaty, I'm going to have to take their binding towel, put it over their body to then adjust them so that I don't slip as a teacher. And each student needs to have their own binding towel because A, even though I'm not afraid of germs, that is kind of gross to be using the same towel on everyone who's sweating profusely. But B, it is, your sweat is your prana. 
right? So you want to keep that, that, that the teacher wants to use your prana to move you, if that makes sense. And you can use, I mean, again, these are from India. We order, uh, we're about to get a huge shipment in from India. Um, we, we buy uh, uh, carpets and binding towels from India uh, because the money goes directly to a family that we know. And so we feel like we like giving business to small businesses. Um, if that's something you're interested in ordering it from AYA, um, just contact me and let me know. But you can, there are companies like Yogi Toes that do kind of sell the kind of the, those towels as well. They're corporations though. Um, so that's just up to you. Um, but I would suggest that for people as well. When you start to notice that, that when you're starting to sweat so much, how to work with the sweat is, and they won't let you into the shawl without a binding towel or a carpet because it's just, it gets so sweaty in that room. I mean, the condensation is all over the wall. That's how sweaty that room is, is in India. Like we always say, there's two temperatures in India in the, in the shala, windows open, windows closed. That's it. You know, <laughs> and it's, it's funny. Um, out of all the white people that are in there, there's like three of us from Georgia. There's one person from Alabama and there's like six people from Florida. We are the only white people <laughs> that can actually handle the heat. Those bless my friends in India who are from Copenhagen. <laughs> in Canada, they start swaying with that heat. They start getting real flush. And I'm like, well, this is a good thing about growing up in the deep South. This heat is nothing for us. So, so anyway, so I hope that answers some questions about the, uh, with mats and mats too. Again, guys, you're just going to have to experiment and find what works for you. Your mat again will become very sacred to you. It's, it's, um, you're going to start, I, I'm, I'm going to be very kind of Gr uh, gruesome about this. Um, I actually was talking to Stephanie about this the other day on the phone. You will start to stink like you've never stunk before in Ashtanga yoga. And that is because, and then I talked about this yesterday because the sweat that you're sweating in Ashtanga yoga, it's not like the sweat you sweat in Zumba because these asanas, these postures are designed to like dig deep into your body and pull up toxins that have been in there for decades. You're going to smell like death half of the time. They smell like ass. Yeah. I was telling Stephanie, I was like, yeah, I have clothes I practice in and clothes I teach in. I have two different wardrobes because the practice clothes, no matter how many times I watch them, they, they now have a smell to them. And I don't want my students to have to smell that on me, even though I'm smelling it on them, you know? So, so I just going to warn you guys, like you are going to smell stuff coming off of your body that literally smells like death, but that's a good thing. It's, it's coming out. So, so, um, and it happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. So don't, don't worry. Okay. Anything else you girls want to add before we get started? Nope. Just forgive what I look like. That's all I can say. No, that's not your I don't really a care. Being. That's why I'm doing this. You're a human mm -hmm. being. Your spirit is using your, your vehicle as a way to learn itself. And so if we got on the yoga mat and could do it perfectly, what's the fun in that? Then we would never I'm know. I'm ourselves. also going to warn too, when we get into last, I don't know how far you're going to take us, um, Bryce, but I will say there might be a possibility if I go to the left today, by any chance it happened to me yesterday, I was a sopping mess of freaking crying my eyes out. So if that might happen, whatever. It's, it's okay. okay. You just keep crying. When, I, I've said this before. I, keep, this I was practicing and crying at the same time. Like, <laughs> <I can't. laughs> and then when I kept going. Happens. So when this happens in a, in a Mysore room with me as a teacher and all, all the teachers I know, um, we just ignore it. Like that's that no teacher is going to call you out for it. No teacher is going to put the spotlight on you because it's happening to you. If I see a student crying on their mat, I just let them be. I don't draw attention to it. I let them just kind of be. I'm not, I'm not going to as a teacher go, Oh my God, what's wrong. And like the whole class, look at that student. No, I know what's wrong. They're detoxing emotions and mm -hmm. I need to just let that. That's the, that's the point. Right. So, so yeah, don't even worry about it. If that happens, um, don't even worry about it. I'll be, I'll be a great like model of what this looks like. How about that? <laughs> All right. Do you girls have your blocks too? I do. Cause we're going to, yay, work with the blocks. <laughs> I'm going to switch uh -huh. my camera over. <laughs> All righty. So should we do the opening chant? I'll do it. And you girls can just listen in, our, in a traditional program. I would have you call and repeat, but since we're on Zoom, I'm not going to have you call and repeat. Now let's review this again for our friends watching. 
When we come to chant, we don't want to press our hands all the way together, guys. That's not the chanting mudra. Um, again, as I told the ladies last week, when you're in India, when they greet each other, hello to their friends, they keep their hands in a prayer position, greeting each other. And this is because they're not huggers. Um, in India, like hugging someone is sharing karma with someone. So if you're going to greet a friend, you, you keep your hands together and bow, basically saying it's really good to see you, but respectfully, I keep my karma, you keep your karma. So that's not the mudra we want when we chant. When we chant, we want to keep the hands open. Yeah, open. And this is, a, and, and Emmy can talk more about this with the Reiki, but you start to feel the energy in between the palms. We know that the hands, the energy centers in the hands connect to the heart chakra. So this is opening up your heart and your mind in order to learn, to take the information needed. So let's come to Sama Sitihi for the two girls together. And I will just do the chant today. Um, over time, I'll teach the girls the chant. Oh. One day, Gudanam Charanaravinde, Sandara Shita Swatma Sukhavabode, Nishreya Se Jangali Kayamane, Samsara Hala Hala Muha Shantye, Abahu Paru Shakaram, Shanka Shakrasi Darhinam, Sahasra Shirasam Shwetam, Prananami Patanjalin. Oh. All right, Sama Sitihi, hands by your side. Pull the belly in, relax the shoulders. Surya Namaskar A five times. Ekam inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe exhale, forward full, hands by your feet. Trini inhale, head up, lengthen the spine. Chatwadi exhale, jump or step back to plank position. And me stay in plank, step knee lower. Pancha inhale, up dog. Look at your nose. Shut, exhale, downward facing dog. Both ladies, spread your fingers apart, press into your heels. Tuck your chin in, look towards your navel, pull the belly button in, hollow belly, actively being here once again. The first couple of sun salutations are always going to feel a little bit gross and nasty because the body is just waking up. But we start that activation, downward facing dog is a variation of a handstand. So we are actively here, not resting. That's three, four, and five, Sapta, inhale, come forward, head up. Ashtau, exhale, fold. Nava, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Exhale, hands by your side, Samasitihi. Ekam, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe, exhale, forward, fold. Trini, inhale, head up. Chatwari, exhale, jump or step back. Pancha, inhale, up dog. Shut, exhale, down dog. Once again, spread the fingers out. If you find your hand coming off the mat at any point, that means you've lost strength. There's a weakness there, so plug the hand into the mat. Tuck the chin in, Stephanie. Tuck, step your feet back like half an inch. Good, yes. That's three, four, and five. Sapta, inhale, come forward, head up. Ashtau, exhale, fold. Nava, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Exhale, hands by your side, samasitihi, point zero position. Ekam inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe exhale, forward fold. Trini inhale, head up. Chatwari exhale, jump or step back, lower down, except any. Pancha inhale, up dog. 
Shut, exhale, down dog, five breaths here. Once again, spread your fingers out, press into the arms. So vinyasa means a choreographed movement with breath. So the Sanskrit count is the vinyasa count. There are nine vinyasas in Surya Namaskar A, and there are 17 vinyasas in Surya Namaskar B, all starting at point zero position, which is Samastitihi. So if you remember in geometry, we're making shapes like an architect draws on a grid. That's what you're doing with your body, always returning back to Samastitihi point zero, the neutral position. That's four. And that's five. Sapta, inhale, come forward, head up. Ashtal, exhale, fold. Nava, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Exhale, hands by your side, samasitihi, point zero position. Ekam, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, first vinyasa. Dwe, exhale, forward, fold, second vinyasa. Trini, inhale, head up, third vinyasa. Chatwadi, exhale, jumper, step back, lower down, fourth vinyasa, step in each, elbows and even more. Pancha, inhale, up dog, fifth vinyasa. Shut, exhale, down dog, sixth vinyasa, five breaths. Again, pressing into the palms, tucking the chin in. Body is starting to get a little hotter now. Start to feel the movement of the blood through the ribs as you pull the belly button and even more. So the sun salutations again are igniting the prana. Surya, sun, it's prana, namaskar is a greeting. So making your body sweat, waking up sweaty. And then when we get into the fundamental sequence, we're really starting to open up and strengthen the bandhas. So be here in this moment. That's four. And that's five. Sapta, inhale, come forward, head up, seventh vinyasa. Ashtau, exhale, fold, eighth vinyasa. Nava, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, ninth vinyasa. Exhale, hands by your side. Samasitihi, last time. Ikam, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, first vinyasa. Dwe, exhale, forward fold, hands by your feet, second vinyasa. Trini, inhale, head up, lengthen your spine, third vinyasa. Chatwadi, exhale, jump or step back, lower down, so step in each elbows in more, fourth vinyasa. Butt up, pull your belly up, lower belly in, Stephanie, so come up a little bit, now pull, so pull that lower belly in, think about pulling the navel to the spine. And then pull your elbows in and start to just lower a little bit. Keep that control. Good. Pancha, inhale, upward facing dog, fifth vinyasa. Shut, exhale, downward facing dog, sixth vinyasa, five breaths here. Spread the fingers out. See if you can press into the fingertips as well as the palm of the hand. Tuck the chin and look towards the navel. Emmy, start to separate your shoulder blades even more to get that action into your, into your shoulders. Pressing into your heels, even if your heels don't touch the mat, you're still pressing into them. That's three, four, and five. Sapta, inhale, come forward, head up, seventh vinyasa. Ashtau, exhale, fold, eighth vinyasa. Nava, inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, ninth vinyasa. Exhale, hands by your side, Samasitihi, Surya Namaskar B. So again, Surya Namaskar B now has 17 vinyasas. Ikam inhale, bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, first vinyasa. Dwe, exhale, straighten your legs and fold, second vinyasa. Trini inhale, head up, third vinyasa. Chatwari, exhale, jumper, step back, lower down, fourth vinyasa. Pancha inhale, up dog, fifth vinyasa. Shut, exhale, down dog, sixth vinyasa. Sup to inhale, step your right foot forward, back heel grounds down, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, Varavadrasana A, seventh vinyasa. Ashtau, exhale, fold, hands to the mat, eighth vinyasa. Nava, inhale, up dog, ninth vinyasa. Dasha, exhale, down dog, tenth vinyasa. Ekarasha, inhale, left foot forward, right heel grounds down, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, Varavadrasana A, 11th vinyasa. Dwadasha, exhale, hands to the mat, step back and lower, 12th vinyasa. Trayodasha, inhale, up dog, 13th vinyasa. Chaturasha, exhale, down dog, 14th vinyasa. Now, Emmy, I want you to start to 
recreate the shape of your of the back of your where your scapulas are where your shoulder blades are the same shape you do in plank position i want you to try to mimic that in downward dog that's three four and five punch it a shot inhale come forward head up 15th vinyasa shoulder shy exhale fold 16th vinyasa Sup to the shah, bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, 17th vinyasa. Exhale, hands by your side, samasitihi, two more times. Ekam inhale, bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe, exhale, forward fold. Trini, inhale, head up, lengthen the spine. Chatwari, exhale, jump or step back, lower down. Pancha, inhale, upward facing dog. Look at your nose. So now up dog, look at your nose. That opens the back of your neck. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Now supta, inhale, right foot forward. Back heel grounds down. Arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Ash down, exhale, hands to the mat. Step back and lower. Nava, inhale, upward facing dog. Dasha, exhale, downward facing dog. Ekarashaya, inhale, left foot forward, right heel grounds down, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Duadashaya, exhale, hands to the mat, step back and lower. Trayodashaya, inhale, up dog. Jatodashaya, exhale, downward facing dog, five breaths here. Press again into the fingertips. So once again, downward facing dog is not a resting posture. I know in a lot of contemporary yogas, they say this. This is not true. This is a very active posture. You should only rest in the final posture. There's no resting. Nothing. This is a variation of a handstand. So press into your fingers. Try to lengthen the, sh the, the arms. Feel the ribs start to separate as you tuck the chin in. Look towards the navel. Pull the navel in. Feel, feel the, the back of the hamstring start to open up. The body is coming alive. That's what you're feeling. You're just feeling the life in the body. That's three, four, and five. Punch it to shy. Inhale, come forward, head up. Show to shy. Exhale, fold. Sup to the shy. Bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Exhale, hands by your side. Samasitihi. One more time. Ekam inhale, bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe, exhale, straighten your legs and fold. Trini, inhale, head up, lengthen your spine. Chatwari, exhale, jump or step back, lower down. Pancha, inhale, upward facing dog, look at your nose, open the neck. Shat, exhale, downward facing dogs. Supta, inhale, right foot forward, back heel grounds down, arms up, eyes to the thumbs, follow the thumbs. Ash, now exhale, hands to the mat, step back and lower. Nava, inhale, upward facing dog. Look at your nose. Dasha, exhale, downward facing dog. Ikarasha, inhale, left foot forward, right heel grounds down, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwadasha, exhale, hands to the mat, step back and lower. Trayudasha, inhale, upward facing dog. Chittodashaya, exhale, downward facing dog, five breaths. This is the last time in all of Ashtanga Yoga, in all of the series, all six series, the last Suri Namaskar B, the final downward facing dog. This is the last time you will be here for five breaths. So really plug in like you're charging up a cell phone, press into your hands, tuck your chin and look towards your navel, separate your shoulder blades, start to cue up. The serratus anterior muscle that's going to be a supporting muscle in the jump back, jump through. Pull the belly in. Take a moment to really stare at that navel. Even if you can't see the navel, keep your eyes going in that direction and see if you can actually move into the body and feel the life force moving in your body. The physical life force, the shakti of the life force is expressed through the blood. So feeling your blood moving, pulsating, your heart rate is probably lifted right now, elevated. This is you being alive. Feel the life. That's four. And that's five. Panjita Shah, inhale, come forward, head up. 
Shoulder shy, exhale, fold. Sup to the shah, bend your knees, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Exhale, hands by your side, sama sitihi. So right now for the ladies, they should be feeling pretty sweaty. Now we're going to move into the fundamental sequence. So this would be considered, this is how all the series opens up with this sun Siri Namaskar A, Siri Namaskar B. Now we're moving into fundamentals. So this is what's going to really open up our strength in their bandhas for the primary series that's to come. Padangushtasana, uh, Ekam, inhale, jump or step your feet hip width apart. Now, Stephanie, that's too far. So let's look at this. A lot of times, ladies, especially if you struggle with things like body dysmorphia, when we come into Padangushtasana, Sometimes what people will do is they'll jump their feet further than their hips. What I want everybody to do if you're following along is to find your hip bones. Find your hip bones. That's how far your feet go. And then, so that's the ache of inhale. Jump or step the feet apart. The dway exhale. Pull the belly in because forward folding is about your stomach. Your, take that forward fold. Toes, uh, fingers come around your big toes. So when your fingers come around your big toes... The peace fingers are going to go in between the big toe and the toe beside it. And then the thumb is going to touch the index finger. Close the mudra. Then dway, exhale, fold. Elbows come out to the side. Look at your nose. Dristi is the nose. Five breaths here. So go ahead and fold, Stephanie. Bend your elbows out to the side. Look at your nose. So make sure your weight. So Stephanie, your weight's hanging out in your heels. Yes, there you go. Pull the belly in more. Good, Emmy. Pull the belly in more. Again, forward folding is not about your hamstrings. Hamstrings are secondary. Forward folding is about your digestive system. So pull the belly in. The more you pull the belly in, the more you're going to fold. That's three, four, and five. Trini, inhale, head up. Hold it here, exhale. Padahasasana, a lot of people do this posture wrong, guys. So here we go. Akam, inhale. You're going to bring your hands under your feet. You are not, however, going to bring the toes all the way to the wrist. That's incorrect. You will get yelled at in India for this. Release your hands. Palm of the hand comes to the bottoms of the toes. Pull the toes up towards the shins and then start to rock forward as you simultaneously continue to pull your toes up. And then dway, exhale, fold, elbows out to the side. Good. One. Two. Three. So Stephanie, rock your weight forward even more. Four. And five. Trini, inhale, head up. Exhale, stand all the way back up. Jump or step your feet back together. Samasiti hi. Uttita Trigonasana, Ekam, inhale, step the right foot out to the right. Right foot comes to a 90 degree angle, left foot 45. Stephanie, line your right heel up with your back left heel. And then pull your left toes in more towards your right foot. Yes, there you go. Same with you, Emmy. Emmy, shorten your stance a little bit. So in traditional yoga with this posture, we want this, 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 the legs to be closer together because of molabunda. We don't want to lose molabunda. Now, dway exhale, catch your right big toe. So if you cannot catch your toe in this, I want you to catch your shin. If you are catching your toe, same mudra, the thumb is going to touch the index finger. Left arm comes straight up. Now, I want you to pull, push into your right toe, actively push into that right toe and pull against it to ignite the inner thigh coming into the perineum. Pull the belly in. Your left arm extended up. All of your fingers should be together. They should not be separate. They should be together. And if I were there, if I were to come push your arm, it wouldn't move. That's how strong you are. Now, now Emmy, pull your back, your left toes in even more towards your right foot. Yes, there you go. One. There you go. Yes. Two. Now press into the left pinky toe. That's three. Four. Stephanie, try to pull your, your back more towards me. Open your toe. Yes. There you go. Four. And five. Trini, inhale, standing up. Changing sides. Just change your feet. Chatwadi, exhale. Catch your left big toe. So Stephanie, make sure that right ankle, that heel is lined up with the left heel. And then pull the left toes in more towards your, or the right toes in more towards your left foot. Yep, there you go. Now catch your toe. Index finger touches the thumb. Right arm up, pull the belly in. Strong body, press into the left toe, pull against it. So that inner, so that inner thigh activates up into the perineum. Pull the belly in. Relax your neck, Stephanie, but look towards that right thumb. Fingers are together. One, belly is strong. 
two, you're totally strong here, like a statue. Everything's active. Three, four, and five. Punch, inhale, standing up. Turn for Utita Trikonasana B. Now, once again, watch your watch your heel and your, your heels, Stephanie. Make sure they're in alignment. You two, uh, any uh, left toes come in towards your right foot. All right, straight, and, uh, straighten your, uh, excuse me, shorten your stance, Emmy. All right, now we want the hips to be in alignment. So place your hands on your hips. You're going to face the back wall. So turn, Emmy, to face your, the door. Now make sure your hips are in a straight line. So Emmy, you might have to readjust your feet. Yes, there you go. Now Dway exhale, fold, bring your left hand to the floor, inside on or outside of that left foot, or right foot rather. Now, the more advanced you get, the more you're going to be able to take that hand to the outside of the foot to twist. Now, what I want you guys to do now, this is a self-adjustment because when we have hip issues and twisting, sometimes we take that and we dump it into the knees and we don't want to deal with it and then we end up with knee problems. Stephanie, spread your feet out a little bit wider. You're a little, little too close together. So what I want you guys to do now is I want you to readjust your hips. I want you to pull your right hip back and your left hip forward. And then I want you to take your chest, your torso that for most people will start to cave in. And I want you to, with control, pull it away from the leading leg. You feel your Udiana Bunda, your stomach will naturally start to kick in. Watch your back foot, Stephanie. Make sure it's not just hanging, but it's actively there. Press into the foot. One, whole body is active. Two. Three. Four. And five, Trini inhale, standing all the way back up. Turn around, face the front of the room. Same thing. So readjust your feet, square your hips. There's no point in doing a posture if we're going to artfully dodge the posture, right? So if that means we have to pull the expression of the posture back to get the integrity of the posture, then that's what we do. Square the hips and then wave, or excuse me, bring that right hand down. Left arm comes up. Now, same thing. So pull your left hip back and your right hip forward. So you're re-squaring your hips. Now reach the chest away from that leading leg. Good. One, relax your face. There are no bundas in your face. None of the muscles in your face are going to help you get through this practice. They're just going to give you wrinkles. That's three. Four. And five. Pancha. Inhale, standing up. Exhale, step forward to the front of your mat. Sama Sitihi, point zero position, back to neutral. Utita Parzu Kanasana, Ekam inhale, step the right foot out wider this time. Right foot comes to a 90 degree angle, not a 75 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, right leg. So change your legs, Emmy. Switch your legs. No, no, no. Keep um, as you were, but turn around and face the back of the room. Yes. And now bend that knee, right knee. So, for those watching, what I mean is no lazy, none of this. We want to come into a 90 degree angle. Now, for some of you, if you do what Stephanie, look what Stephanie's doing. She's doing that. Her knee and her ankle are out of alignment. So Stephanie, walk your right foot out. All right, 90 degree angle. Now, what I want everybody to do when they're in this 90 degree angle, I want you to look down at your knee. If your knee is cut caving inward, then push it back. Make the inner thigh work. And then press into the back left foot. And then Dway exhale, bring your right hand to the floor, to the pinky toe side. Pinky toe side, right hand, right hand. Stephanie, other hand, right hand, yes. And then left arm's gonna come up and over the head. Yes, now watch your hips. Stephanie, can you get your whole palm to the floor? Not whole yet. Palm. Yeah, you got it there, that's it. Your whole palm's there. Now reach with that right hand. Now, now both of you try to open your chest towards the ceiling as you press into that back foot. One, good. It's a very intense posture. Two, three. Open that chest more, Stephanie. Four, heart to the sky. And five, Trini inhale, standing up, changing sides. So lunging into that left leg. Once again, Find a 90 degree angle. Everybody's got the muscles there to do this. 
no 75 degree angle, 90 degree angle. Inner thigh working. And then Dway exhale, bring that left hand down to the floor. Right arm comes up and over. So spread your legs out even further, Stephanie. No cheating. My teacher would say, oh, bad lady. No <laughs> cheating. All right. Open the chest. Sink even deeper. You should feel a fire. So right now there's a fire activating in the left side of the body while the right side of the body is opening up from the heat. See those opposing forces. That's what we're dealing with this in this practice is opposing forces. That's three. Four and five. Now punch, inhale, standing up. We're going to turn for Utita Pars Volkanasana B. So put a lunge back into that right knee. And for beginners, this is a very intense twist. It will turn into a very intense twist. But for, for, for four beginners, I want you to take your left elbow and bring it over. So try to get that armpit over. So Stephanie, look at me for a second because you're kind of dropping in this. So what I want you doing is bringing that armpit over and twisting, not doing this. We're opening. So take that right hand. So here's what something you can do. So let's make a fist with the left hand. So go ahead and put a 90 degree angle, bring that left elbow armpit over that right leg. Now make a fist with your left hand and take your right hand and place the right hand on top of that fist and push to open, no, right on top of the finger, Stephanie, not on the wrist, other, other way. And then push open your, don't look at the floor, look at the ceiling. You're twisting. That dip, dip even deeper, then even deeper. Got three, look up, 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 the eyes are the tops of the spine. So take that twist up. That's four and that's five. Now inhale coming up, Trini inhale, let's change sides. So now in the left leg lunging, Deep, deep, deep lunge. Bring the elbow over. One day your armpit is going to come over and your hand's going to come to the floor. We're building up to that. So make a fist with the right hand now. Right hand. So not like this, Steph. Like this. Nope. Like this. So that's me. My glasses. La so bring, so your, your hands are being lazy. So come up. Like this, like try to make your arms in a straight line. I gotta come closer, what? Like, okay, Emmy's got it. See how Emmy's doing that in a straight line? Like this? Yes, with a straight line. So you can get that twist, really crack into that twist. Okay, so right elbow comes over, make that fist, straight line, look up, dig, dig even deeper, 90 degree angle in that front leg, good one. Get, get uncomfortable. It's only five breaths, we just hit it and quit it. That's two. Three, four, and five. Trini inhale, standing up. Or sorry, punch inhale, standing up. Exhale, step forward to the front of your mat. Sama CTE. So the Uthi to Pars Vokanasanas are some of the most intense. Fun We're not even into primary series yet. This is still just the warm up, the fundamental sequence. All right. Prasarita Padottanasana, hands to your waist. Akam inhale, step the right foot out, pigeon toe your feet. So spread your legs wide for this one because we want to try to get the head to the floor. Pigeon toe your feet, meaning pull your toes in towards your body. That's going to activate the big toes, which will activate the inner thigh. Now, Dway exhale, fold hands to the floor. Trini inhale, lengthen your spine. And then exhale, tuck your chin in, back of your head, not the top of your head. Good, Emmy, back of your head to the floor. Steph, walk your hands even further. So I want you to try to bring your torso all the way through your body. Strong core. It's going to take a very strong core. One. Good. Two. Tuck the chin in. Get those bundas engaged. Three. Four. And five. Chachwadi. Inhale. Head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Pancha, inhale, catch your waist, stand all the way back up, and then hold it here, exhale. Now, Ekam, inhale, arms out to the side. Dwe, exhale, catch your waist, squeeze your waist. Inhale. Trini, exhale, fold, tuck your chin in, back of your head to the mat. Again, try to pull your torso through your legs without using your arms. One. Keep pressing into your big toes. Two. 
three, four, and five. Chachwadi inhale, coming all the way back up. Hold it here, here, exhale. Take them, inhale, arms out to the side. Do we exhale, clasp your hands behind your back. Inhale. Trini, exhale, fold. Tuck your chin, and I want you to think about getting the top of your head to the mat and your arms all the way down to the mat. Now, both of you ladies come up because you both have tight shoulders here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have you grab your binding towel. So go grab your binding towel. As a teacher, I would adjust you here, but I'm not there to adjust you. I want you to take your binding towel, fold it in half like this, put it behind your back, bring your hands relatively close together, but separate so your shoulders have mo more mobility. Come back to that position with your toes, and then exhale, fold with that. Good. One. And over time, the more your shoulders start to open, you're going to walk your hands in even more. That's two. So they're eventually clasped together. That's three. And they will touch the floor. If my hands can touch the floor in this, anybody's hands can touch the floor in this. That's three. Four. And five. Touch body and heel. Coming all the way back up. Hold it here. Exhale. Drop your towel. Ick and inhale, catch your waist. Do a exhale, fold, catch your toes. Thumb touches the index finger. Inhale, head up. Trini, exhale, tuck your chin in. Again, Steph, make sure your weight isn't hanging out in your heels. That's something that you have a habit of doing, doing. So notice that in your practice. That's three, something interesting. Oh, interesting. So that's something first, as I say in a lot of the talks. All right, Stephanie, that's interesting. You pull your weight in your heels. Something to notice. That's three, four, and five. Chatwadi, inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Pancha, inhale. Catch your waist standing up. Exhale, step forward to the front of your mat. Sama Sitihi. If your legs feel a little jelloey right now, that's a good thing. You, you woke up, you woke up Molabunda. All right, so this is the last posture of the fundamental sequence. I want you to bring your hands behind your back. Now, I'm going to show you guys in the camera. Your hands are going to come behind your back into a prayer position. Now, for a lot of people, it's going to look something like this. That's not the end point. We want to get them in between the shoulder blades and bring the hands all the way together to close the mudra. If that's not possible for now, you're just going to grab your elbows. All right? Now, ink and inhale, step the right foot back, small step, small step, step the right foot back, and then turn around and face the back of the room, square your hips. Make sure they're squared. Now, Dway, exhale, fold, chin to shin. So as you fold, Stephanie, try to, even if you're just thinking about it, pushing those arms up even further up the spine. Drop, if you can drop your chin to your shin, go ahead and do so. Hold the belly in, press into your right big toe. That's three, four. And five, Trini, inhale, standing up. Turn around, face the front of the room, changing sides. Chatwadi, exhale, fold. Press into that left big toe. One. Two. Three. Four. And five, Pancha, inhale, standing up. Exhale, step forward to the front of your mat. Sama Sitihi. So, how are you ladies feeling? My feet are hurting. I'm Good. dying. Good. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So, that isn't even, guys, for people watching right now, that's just the sun salutations and the fundamental sequence. That's what opens up all of the series. We haven't even gotten to primary series yet. This next posture is the first posture of primary series, and this is Utita Hasta. Padangushtasana. Now, for those watching, I'm going to show you what you're going to see in a lot of YouTube videos from people like me who have done this forever, okay? You're going to see the left hand to the waist, and you're going to see someone actually catch their big toe. Let me actually move the camera up, right? So they're going to be able to catch their big toe. Sorry. <sighs> I need a cameraman. Catch the big toe, right? And then once they've caught that big toe, thumb touches the index finger, they're going to point the toe, pull against it, and then fold chin to shin. But for beginners and for like Stephanie 
and Emmy who are just learning this. So balancing postures are postures of strength. So if you're struggling and balancing, that's telling you where you're weak, that there's weakness. Okay. This is where your feet really ignite. <laughs> well, you're, you might be overworking your feet stuff to avoid working your legs in this too. Oh, I don't know. They're both on fire. <laughs> so try to bring the, try to bring the energy into the leg, into the quadriceps. Okay. So for Emmy and staff, they're going to start with their right leg. I'm going to have, or for anybody watching who wants to try this, bend your knee, catch your toe, always catch the toe, squeeze the waist. Now try to extend the leg out. If you can only get like this far, then you stay here. If you can go all the way out, go all the way out. Point the toe if you can, and then Dway exhale, fold chin to shin if you can. One, two, three, four, and five. Now inhale, lift your head up, stand up straight. Exhale, bring the leg out to the side. Keep pointing the toe, and then look over your left shoulder. Five breaths. One. Two, three, four, and five. Bring that leg back to center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, head up. Hands to your waist. Point your toe. Five breaths. Now, for those at home watching, watch your ego here. So I can keep my leg up pretty high in this because I've been doing it for most of my adult life. If you find yourself... Rocking back to keep your leg up, that's a no-no. Stand up straight. If that means you have to drop your leg a little bit, drop your leg. No rocking back. Think about putting a book on your head. One. This is like Navasana. This is a very hot pose. Two. It's generating that fire. Three. Four. And five. Good. Samas Dihi. Changing sides. So once again, now the left side. Ash down. Inhale. Catch your left big toe. If that means you got to bend your knees, bend your knees. So, uh, and then bring the leg right in front of you, directly in front of you. Now point the toe, pull against it. And then Nava, exhale, fold, chin to shin. One. Good. Keep pointing that toe. I mean, good. Two. Three. Four. And five. Now inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale, leg up to the side. Point the toe. Pull against it. Look over your right shoulder. One. You got to keep pointing that toe. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, foot to center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, head up. Hands to the waist. Point your toe and balance. Stand up straight. One. Like you've got a, a, a rope is pulling your head up. Two. Three. Four. And five, good, Samas Dihi. All right, so now we're gonna do the next posture. The second posture of the primary series is Ardha Bhatta Padmottanasana. This is a counter pose. Now let me show this. I'm gonna break this down for those watching because if the ego kicks in with this one too, danger coming, okay? So Ardha Bhatta Padmottanasana. You're gonna take your right foot, bring it into the left hip, half Padmasana. So none of this shit, this shit is not yoga. This is Western shit. This. Half Padmasana. Now you're going to take your right hand, reach it behind your back. If you can catch your right foot, you're going to go further. If you cannot catch your right foot, you're just going to hold the left elbow and stay standing. So ladies, go ahead and lift your right foot up. Half Padmasana. No toe this way. Toe come, it comes right into the hip. Reach around. Catch the foot if you can. If you can't catch the foot, Stay standing. If you can catch the foot, you're going to take a forward fold. Now, this is why I'm saying do not let your ego get in the way. Because if you cannot catch your foot yet, that means that your knee is not ready to fold. So if you fold right now and you can't catch your foot, that's your ego. And you're going to blow your knee out. That's a hard, that's some hard karma to learn. It's a hard lesson to learn. So just stay standing. That's three, four. And five, if you're folded, inhale, head up, hold it here, exhale, inhale, standing up, and then exhale, pancha, exhale, leave your leg, samasitihi, changing sides. Shots, inhale, catch your left foot. So now the left foot comes into the right hip. 
Once again, reach around, see if you can catch that foot. If you can't catch the foot, catch the elbow, stay standing. If you can catch the foot, take a nice forward fold. Good, one, two, three, four, and five. If you fold it, ash down, inhale, head up, hold it here, exhale. Nava, inhale, standing up. Dasha, exhale, leave your leg, samasitihi, legs together. We always want, that's one thing I want to tell people in Ashtanga Yoga, when we're standing in samasitihi, we always want the feet to touch. The reason being is we want to feel that line of energy coming up the legs into the perineum. That's Mola Bunda. So here we go. Ekam inhale, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Dwe exhale, forward fold, hands by your feet. Trini inhale, head up, lengthen the spine. Chatwadi exhale, jump or step back, plank position, lower down. Panja inhale, upward facing dog. Look at your nose, Steph. Look at your nose, not your, not your, your nose. Look at your nose. Good. Shot exhale, down dog. Supta inhale, jump or step your feet forward to Utkatasana. So come to the front of the mat. I'm going to break this down for a moment because this posture is one of the most widely done wrong postures in America. This posture does not mean chair pose. Don't you dare call this posture chair pose. That is not what this means in Sanskrit, and it's not its name. All right? When we do Utkatasana, I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see me. We're not separating the legs. None of this shit. I don't know what this shit is. This is not Utkatasana. Bring your legs all the way together. Bend your knees. Okay? And then your hands are going to come all the way above your head, and then you're going to drop your head back. Drop your head way back. Open your throat. Challenge the breath. Pull your belly in more, Emmy. And then see if you can get your ponytail to touch your chest. Good. One. That's it. Two. It's a zigzag. Three. Four. And five. Straighten your legs and fold. Now, for more advanced practitioners, they will lift up in a half-tuck handstand here, but that's not happening for Emmy and, Emmy and Steffi yet. So they're just going to inhale, lift their heads up. Ash down, inhale, lift your head up halfway. Nava, exhale, jump back, chaturanga. Dasha, inhale, upward facing dog. Ikadasha, exhale, downward facing dog. Vera Vajrasana, A. Supta, inhale, step the right foot forward. Back heel grounds down, 90 degree angle. Create the fire, arms up, eyes to the thumbs. Same thing, so watch your chest, Stephanie. Don't reach too far forward. Good, one. So, and you're also, so something, Stephanie, you're also reaching forward, it looks like, because you're compensating for not having to bend the knee that much. So that's also a cheat. Not on purpose. No, well, most of the time we don't cheat on purpose. That's why it's called the artful dodger. So yes, find your 90 degree angle. So when you reach forward, it's like your, your body's going, but I don't want to go that far. Go that far. It's just five breaths. Yoga is not about relaxing. Don't ever, ever say yoga is about relaxing. That's ignorant. If a teacher tells you yoga is about relaxing, don't go back to their class. They don't know what they're talking about. Yoga is the opposite of relaxing. It's actually working. All right? So bend into that knee. Create that fire in the inner thigh, that juicy fire. One. Keep bending, Stephanie. Keep going. Two. Three. It creeps. Find your muscles. They're there. Four. We're on an exploration to find them. And that's five. Straighten the front leg. Turn around. Face the back of the room. Same thing. There, Vajrasana A. Bend 90. Now watch your, now watch your knee and ankle alignment. Step knee again. Walk, walk the foot a little bit, a little bit further towards the, the window. Now pull your back foot in more. So walk. that left foot, toes come towards that leading leg. Like that? No. Like, like pull the foot in. Like, like, like Emmy's doing. If you can see any. I can't see anything without my glasses. Okay. Yeah. So never want us. We want it pulled in. Yes. There we go. Because the feet are so important. The, the feet placement in this practice are super important. Now, duh, duh, now into that 90. Pull your chest back. Pull your chest back. Good. One. What? Pull it back. Don't lean forward. Two. Not your head. Your chest. The whole chest. Three. Four and five. Now open out there of a dress and a B to the back of the room. So you're still staying in the back of the room. Nope. Left leg, Emmy, or Stephanie, left leg. Yep. Left leg. There of a dress and a B. Yes. Open out. Open out. 
Yeah, deep 90 degree angle. Don't lose the, no, no 75 degree angle, 90 degree angle. With what foot? The left leg, the bent leg. So like this, I don't, again, I don't want to see anybody doing some half-assed bear of a dress in a V. I don't want to see this, that's lazy. I want to see this, arms out. Because this is forcing all the muscles to activate. Everything has to turn on. This, not everything has to turn on. This, don't lean forward though, so don't do this step. This is what you're doing. I am not in a position right now. Yeah, you're still doing it though. You're leaning forward. Pull your chest back to the middle. Good, one. Yes, that's it. Two, strong arms. Relax your face, three. Four, and five. Straighten the front leg. Turn around, face the front of the room. Good. Now, don't reach too far forward. Fine. See if you can make your spine totally balanced with your sacrum while you keep pushing into that left leg. One. Good. Better. Yes, that's it, Stephanie. So much better. Look over that right, or excuse me, that right leg. Look over that right finger. So that's your drissy is over the fingertip. That's three. Relax your face. That's four. And that's five. Now cartwheel your hands down to the mat. Step back plank position. Lower chaturanga. Inhale up dog. Look at your nose. Yep. Exhale down. We're facing dog. So grab your blocks if you want them for this. Jump through. Bend your knees. Pull your butt back. Inhale. Jump through. Straight leg. Sit down. All right. So Steph, one thing to watch too and for anybody watching. When we're in upward facing dog position, the dristy is the nose. So people instinctively try to look up in their forehead. But when we do that, when we look up in the forehead, we start to have neck issues. It cramps the neck. <laughs> we want to look at the nose in an up dog in order to release the back of the neck because the neck is part of the spine, right? Like if we're doing a standing back bend, the head's going to come back first like a slinky. and It's going to be the last to come up. All right. And so that might be a why if you've been doing like Western yoga and you've been looking at your, your forehead and up dog, that might be, if someone's got some neck, pro that might be why you have neck problems going on. All right. It's looking at the nose. Now, again, with the eyes. So in Ashtanga yoga, we never close our eyes. We always have a drishti. The eyes are the tops of the spine and the spine carries Shashumna, which is the channel of energy that carries Kundalini. So we always have to make sure our eyes are at the right drishti because that's what's directing that energy in that direction. Does that make sense? All right. So, uh, Dandasana position. So Dandasana is the seated Samasiti. It's the point zero position of the seated series. Okay. For the primary series. So Dandasana, we're going to extend the legs out. Actually, let me go this way. Better lighting this way. So let's extend the legs out. We're going to internally rotate the legs together. So that means they're touching. Flex your feet. Keep the legs nice, the feet nice and flexed. Hands come by your hips. Pull your chin in. Totally active here for five breaths. And as you're, as you're here, you're neutralizing. So you are neutralizing your body. So think of the top of your head down to the tips of your toes. And think of a spiral of energy like the slide at McDonald's playground coming down through your body. One, keep those hands down. Two, three, four, and five. Now, Paschimottanasana A. I want you to ash down, inhale, catch your big toes. The one thing I don't want anybody to ever, ever do is this shit. I don't want you to lift your arms up and then fold. I just want you to reach your hands forward, catch your toes. So if you can catch your toes, your thumb's going to touch your index finger. And then exhale, fold, chin to the shin, look towards your feet. Now, if you cannot catch your feet at all or your toes at all, you're going to take your binding towel and bring it around the balls of the feet. That's three. That's four. And that's five. Now, gnaw by inhale, head up, hold it here, exhale. Now we're going to forward fold again. So you're either going to stay where you were, if that's the extent of how far you can go right now in this here now moment, 
or you're going to catch the sides of your feet to go deeper. Or if you can take the full extension, you're going to catch your left wrist, make a fist with the left hand, come around the balls of the feet and then fold. Now I always want the bind to be at the balls of the feet. That's because there is a pressure point in the balls of the feet that connects to your respiratory system. All right. Only time you're ever going to see people bring their hands to the floor like this is for Instagram or YouTube because it's pretty. But in your practice, I want them up here to pull into your feet. Keep your feet flexed and active. When we passively stretch, when the legs relax and we passively stretch, that's when we get injured. It's when energy doesn't move. That's three, four, and five. Now inhale, head up. Hold it here, exhale. Grab your blocks. Here we go. First jump back. Inhale. Cross your legs. Pull your legs in. Hands come in front of you, not beside you. In front of you. Inhale, lift up. Exhale for beginners. Just pull your butt back. Feet on the mat. Step back, plank position. This is where I struggle. <laughs> That's good. That's okay. We need to struggle. If there was no struggle, there would be no yoga. Now, if you're taking the vinyasa, once you get to plank position, lower chaturanga, inhale, up dog, look at your nose, pull your hips forward, the back bends the counter pose, exhale, down dog. Bend your knees on that exhale, pull your butt back, inhale, jump through, straight legs, sit down. Now you just flushed. So guys, we have to take that jump back, jump through for the people watching every single, after every single posture and every single tie side in the seated series to cleanse the karma. So we're not going from one posture to the next. That's that mala bead that Emmy and I were speaking about with the thread. The vinyasa is the thread, the asana is the mala bead. So that was the thread. Now we're into the mala bead. Parvatanasana, hands come behind your back, fingers facing towards your bottom. Now keep your legs internally rotated. Lift up, press into your toes, protract your shoulders, drop your head back, look at your nose. Eyes are at your nose, one. Two, three, four, and five. Exhale, come down, grab your blocks. Inhale, cross your legs, lift up. Don't, don't pause and think too much about it. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, do the best you can. Pull your butt back. Walk it back to plank for beginners. Just walk it back. Lower chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, Ardha Bhatta Padma, Paschimottanasana. Spin your knees, pull your butt back. Sup to inhale, jump through. Straight legs, sit down. So both of you are still having some fear there. You're both putting your feet down. As my teacher would say, why fearing? Why fearing? All right, so that's just something to work. If you're doing that in your practice where you're putting your feet down before you, when you get to the jump through instead of just coming on, with your, on your butt, then that's a fear. All right? So that's just for anybody right now watching, if that's happening to you, something for you to like take inventory of. All right. So we just did the standing. We're now going to do the seated version of this. Ardha Bhatta Padma Paschimottanasana. So you're going to take your right foot, bring it into your left hip. Now, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see the toes hanging over the leg. That's going to cause a knee issue. The arch of the foot needs to come into the belly. It's like a bowl for the belly. If you can't get your foot up that high yet, then you just bring your foot down a little bit. All right. Now I want you to take your right hand behind your back and see if you can catch your foot. If you cannot catch your foot, I want you to take your binding towel, place the towel around the foot, reach your hand around and catch the binding towel. All the binds in primary series are happening over your kidneys. All right. So you're bound. Now, left hand is going to come to the pinky toe side of the left foot. And then exhale, fold chin to the shin. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Now grab your blocks. Cross your legs. Inhale, lift up. Clean the karma. Exhale, take it back. You're flushing the karma. Here's the thread of the mala bead. Inhale, up dog. And look at your nose. Look at your nose. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees. Pull your butt back. Inhale, jump through. Straight legs, sit down. 
Now you're changing sides. The left and the right side have two different energy patterns. That's why we take a vinyasa between each side, guys. It's cleansing that energy so you're not pulling the karma from one side into the other side. All right. Now reach your arm around. If you can't catch that foot yet, use your binding towel. Again, watch the toe. Make sure the toes aren't hanging up off the leg. They're in that joint. And exhale, fold. Catch the pinky toe side of the right side and fold. Good. One. Two, three, four, and five. Shoulder shy, inhale, head up, hold it here, exhale. Grab your blocks. Supta to shaw, inhale, cross your legs, lift up. Take it back. Ashtada shaw, exhale, chaturanga. Trayodashaya, inhale, upward facing dog. Look at your nose. Chaturdashaya, exhale, downward facing dog. Tiryan Mukha, Ekapada, Paschimatanasana. Sapta, inhale, jump through, straight leg, sit down. So this is the counter pose, the pose we just did. All right, so you're going to take your right leg. You're going to bend your right leg back now. Now, I don't want anybody sitting on the heel. You're not sitting on the heel. And you're not going to be on the side of the foot because that's going to torque the knee. You're coming to the tops of the foot. If you have knee issues, I want you to separate your legs. Or if you're really tight and you have super knee issues, you're going to take a block and you're going to place it under the left sits bone. All right, like this. I don't think you girls need that though. But for anybody watching, that's the modification. Now, you can take your left hand and place your left hand outside of the left hip to help stabilize you, to give yourself an adjustment before you fold. But if you don't need an adjustment, you're going to catch your left wrist and come all the way around and fold. Or excuse me, right wrist and fold. Or keep your hand on the, on the ground and catch the foot and fold. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Grab your blocks. Inhale. Cross your legs. Lift up. Exhale, take it back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, bend your knees, pull your butt back. Inhale, jump through, changing sides. Right leg comes through, left leg bends back. Same thing. If you need a modification with the block, you're going to put the block under the right leg. All right, our right hand's going to come to the side. Exhale, folding. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale. Now inhale, cross your legs, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Ashtada Sha. Exhale, take it back. Ekona Vim Shatahi. Inhale, up dog. Look at the nose. Vim Shatahi, exhale, down dog. John Yu Shur Shasana A, Sapta, inhale, jump through, straight legs, sit down. Okay, so this is the quarter primary series mark. So this means this is a posture of neutrality. So this is, a, if you wanted to, which I'm going to ask the girls after we get through this posture, if they want to end here, if they want to go to half primary series. And then I talked about this, you can't end your practice on an unneutral posture. So if I were to end their practices right now, that would make me a really shitty teacher because they're imbalanced right now. Their, their energy is not balanced. It's in the process of now rebalancing because we're going to take John U A. So what's John U A? We're going to take the right foot in. So we always take action on the right foot side, right side first. So pull the right foot in, create a 90 degree angle with the right foot. Now you're going to be trying to get your spine to line up with that left femur bone. Now, if you can catch the sides of your feet, catch the sides of your feet. If you can do the full posture, catch your right wrist around the balls of the feet. Exhale, fold, chin to the shin. Make sure everything is active. Make sure your foot is flexed. It's not lazy because when it gets lazy, that's when we get injured. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Grab your blocks. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. 
Look at your nose. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, pull your butt back. Inhale, jump through. Straight leg, sit down. Left leg comes in now, right leg extends. So Kate, create that 90 degree angle. Again, making sure that spine is now gonna fold over that femur bone. So if you have to catch the wrist, you can catch the wrist or catch the sides of the feet, take that fold. This is neutralizing the body. One, two, three, four, and five. Show to shine, inhale, head up, exhale. Sup to the shaw, grab your blocks, inhale, lift up. Ashtada shaw, exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Vim shitahi, exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, bend your knees, jump through. Straight legs, sit down. Ladies, how are you feeling? I can go further. You want to go further? Emmy? So we have five, um, seven more postures if we go further. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go further. Okay. Now let me go. Let me just, while we're stopped here for a moment, let me guys, let me show you guys a modification. And Emmy, I'm going to tell you this, if your shoulder starts bothering you in the next half of this until we get to the half primary series mark. If you've got a shoulder issue going on, don't stop. You're still going to have to do a vinyasa in between the postures, but there is a modification. So if you have a shoulder issue going on, the modification just turns into Navasana. Okay. So if your shoulder starts bothering you, Emmy, instead of taking the jump back, up dog, down dog, you can just take Navasana to generate that heat to cleanse the body. Okay. All right. So you guys are down now. So we're going to move into John Yushashasana B. So John Yushashasana B, let me explain this to you guys that are watching. If you are on your period and you are practicing on your period, I'm going to ask you not to do this posture. Instead, you're going to do A again. You're just going to pull the right foot in again. If you have prostate issues as a male, you're not going to do this posture. You're just going to do A again. All right. But if you are okay to do this posture for B, I want you to pull your right heel in like, like A, and then you're going to lift up and sit on your heel. So you're, you're going to go from a 90 degree angle to a 45 degree angle. Okay. Now ash out, exhale, fold. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. Nava, inhale, head up, hold it here, exhale. Now, here we go. Grab your blocks, cross your legs, inhale, lift up. Or if you need to take a modification, you're taking Navasana. Inhale, lift up, exhale, jump back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now bend your knees, jump through. Straight legs, sit down, changing side. So now the left foot's going to come in. Lift up, sit on your heel. Go from a 90 degree angle to a 45 degree angle. And then punch it a shot, exhale, fold. You're going to notice a huge difference between each side. That's normal. That's just information for you to know. One. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale. Good. Grab your blocks. Now, shoulder shy, up to the shy, inhale, lift up. Or take Navasana, Ashtada shy, exhale, take it back. Vimshatahi, inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. John Yu, Shershasana C. Sup to inhale, jump through. Straight leg, sit down. Okay. Let's talk about C for a minute because this is an advanced posture. And for a lot of people practicing, I'm going to have them just do A again, right, for a minute because this is an advanced posture, but let's talk about this posture for a second. So ladies, let's just see where your hip flexibility is. So this posture is going to prepare you for leg behind the head. So I want you to take your leg for a moment, your right leg. I want you to lift it up, extend the left leg out, flex your left foot. So make sure your left foot is flexed. So flex your foot, both Emmy and Steffi, flex the foot, because that's your foundation. Now I want you to pull the right leg back 
because this is what's going to get the leg behind the head. And then see if you can get the ball of the foot to your ear without bringing your head down. So bring the leg, the foot to the ear. That's as far as I can go. So if yeah. you can touch, people watching right now, if you can touch your foot to your head without bending forward, if you can bring the leg back to your ear, this means that your leg is ready to go back behind your head. That's the flexibility of your hip. If you're right here, you can't get it there yet. Okay, that's information for you to know. So we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with this posture because this is the posture that's preparing you for leg behind the head. Because the back half of primary series, you're putting your legs behind your head. So this is what we now need to do. So head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees and toes. We all know that, that song, right? From kids. All the joints are connected. The hip muscle, or the hip joint, excuse me, hip joint, is the biggest joint in your body. It's a ball and a socket. So that means it can, it does have the mobility to move in all sorts of directions. But because of stress, because of trauma, because of shoes, because of desk, the muscles and the tendons around that joint get tight. And so it can't move the way it should move. Okay. Now, when, the, when we take that hip, now the hip, because it's the biggest joint, sometimes we use the hip as the junk drawer, where emotions we don't want to deal with, we just take it and we shove it in our hips. So sometimes when we come to these mat, it's just like the twisting posture in the beginning when I was telling you to pull your hips back. When we don't want to deal with the shit that's in our hips, we take that shit and we, or we take the twist and we put it in our knee. And that's when you get knee issues because the knee is a smaller joint. But the, the ankle, the knee, and the hip are all related. And that's what this posture is showing you. So let's just break this posture down very, very slowly. If you are new to this practice, I want you not to do this posture yet. I want you just to do Danyu Shoshasana A again, which is this. But if you want to start to work on this posture, keep your left leg extended and keep it flexed at all times. Because the extended leg is your foundation. It's the foundation of your house. Now, I want you to take your right leg and I want you to take your right arm under the right leg I want you to take your peace fingers to your right big toe I want you to take your left hand to your right heel now we're going to twist the ankle so you're going to pull the ball of the foot down to the floor and the heel up now I've now just released my hands my knee is still up so what I now have to do is shift forward to bring my knee down so that my heel comes into my pelvis and then I fold. You're going to feel intense pressure on these two toes. These two toes connect up to your kidney. Okay, but if you can't do that yet, don't push yourself into that because you're going to blow your knee out. So for most of you, you're just going to sit here and hold it like this and sit up straight and not even fold and just hold it. Especially if your knee doesn't touch the earth yet. Perfect, ladies. That's right where I want you to keep that left leg flexed. One, two, three, four, and five. Now inhale, head up. Exhale. Good. Now cross your legs. Grab your blocks. We got to flush it. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, pull your butt back. Inhale, jump through. Straight leg, sit down, changing sides. So now, now, Stephanie, you're complaining about your left hip. My left hip notoriously is my bad hip. My left leg is longer than my right leg. This is where I, I my left hip sits higher. So I understand that. That's mommy issues, basically, female issues. All right, we're going to take that left leg, keep that right leg nice and flexed. It's same flex, same thing. We're going to pull it back. And now, without dipping forward, keep yourself sitting up straight. See if you can bring the ball of your foot to your ear, to your head. If you can do that, like I can do that, then that means the leg can go behind the head. It's ready. If you can't do that yet, that means it's not ready yet. So you're just going to kind of take inventory of that. And frequently, just a few times a week, check it. See what's going on. Now, bring that left arm under Grab your peace fingers with your, your big toe with your peace fingers, right hand to your heel. Pull the toes towards you. Heel comes away from you. All right. If you're here, you're just going to hold it, sit up straight, right? 
if you can get it down, if that's, if this is a posture you're used to practicing, you're going to readjust to get that knee down and then you're going to fold. All right. One, but you ladies sit up straight. Keep that leg flexed. Good. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Good. Grab your blocks. Cross your legs. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, jump through. Straight legs, sit down. Marich Asana A. All right, so you're going to extend the left leg out. Keep the left leg nice and flexed, and you're going to stand on your right leg. Now, if your right leg is where my right leg is positioned, that's incorrect. We don't want there to, that's going to make it more difficult. Walk the right leg out to the side. Keep your left leg. Now, if you can't bind yet, if binding is just not possible, what you're going to do, you're either going to use a binding towel or you're going to just hug your leg in and sit up straight to stretch, stretch into the hip. If you can bind, you're going to internally rotate that right arm around the shin of the leg, reach behind the back, and catch your hand. All right? Both ladies are using their binding towels. If you have a husband or a kid, you can always have them come and give you the binding towel. Exhale, fold chin to the shin. Keep that left leg nice and flexed. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Now inhale, head up. Hold it here. Exhale. Inhale, grab your blocks. Cross your legs. Lift up. Exhale, take it back. Good. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Good. Bend your knees. Pull your butt back. Inhale, jump through. Straight leg, sit down. Changing sides. Extend the right leg out. Flex the foot. So, again, look at your foot and your, and your, um, and your inner thigh. I also want to mention, too, for Marich Asana A, B, and D, we want to lift the hip up that's on the standing leg. So don't sit. C, we're going to sit on it. But B, we want to lift it up. Walk the foot out to the side. Extend that leg. Flex it. If you're, if you're, if you're not binding, you're hugging the leg sitting up straight. If not, you're going to internally rotate that left arm, reach behind your back, catch your hand, and then exhale, fold, keep the left leg flexed, chin to the shin, one, two, three, so Emmy, walk your left leg out, or yes, your left leg out even more, good, four, even more, a straight line between the knee and the ankle, and five, inhale, head up, exhale. Now inhale, grab your blocks, cross your legs, lift up. Ashtadasha, exhale, take it back. Ekona Vimshutahi, inhale, up dog. So for Emi Navasana, Vimshutahi, exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, jump through, straight leg, sit down, reach Asana, B. Let's talk about B. So if you are been practicing for a while, you're going to take your left foot into your right hip. Again, make sure the left toes aren't coming out. And then you're going to stand on your right knee or your right foot. Now, if you do this, if you're doing this and you're doing, and this is happening, then I want you to take the foot for both of you. I want you to take your foot and I want you to bring it underneath like that. Don't sit on the foot, just place it. Okay. All right. So same thing. It's a forward fold. So now we're going to take that. Right arm, we're going to internally rotate it, reach behind the back, and then exhale, fold, walk the foot out to the side. So Emmy, even more. Good. Now fold, chin to the shin, or chin to the floor. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale. Good. Now grab your blocks or take Navasana. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, jump through. Straight legs, sit down. Okay, changing sides. So once again, if you're taking full posture, right foot's coming in. You're standing on the left leg. If this happens, put the foot under the sits bone to protect that knee. Okay, left arm comes around. Reach behind the back, catch the foot. Exhale, fold five breaths. One, 
two, three, four, and five. Shoulder shy, inhale, head up. Exhale, catch your blocks. So take Navasana, Supta and Shaw, cross your, Supta to Shaw, cross your legs, lift up. Ashtada Shaw, exhale, take it back. Yekona Vim Shatahi, inhale, up dog. Vim Shatahi, exhale, down dog. Marich Asana C, Supta, inhale, jump through. Straight leg, sit down. Okay, so this is the one Marich Asana where the, the both sits bones are going to be on the ground. All right, so you're going to set up just like A, extend the left leg out, stand on your right leg. Now, this time again, both the sits bones are going to be on the mat. So no binding towel for this one, Stephanie. Okay, flex the left leg. Now, this is a twist. So if you cannot bind yet, you're going to first start by pulling the leg in and twisting. If you want to go further, you're going to take the left arm elbow to the outside of the right thigh and twist. If you can take the bind, the left arm is going to internally rotate come around the body and catch the right hand and bind. But if you're not there yet, don't push it. Just work on that twist. The eyes are the tops of the spine. So keep looking over your back, keep your left leg flexed. One, walk your right foot closer this time now to your inner thigh of the left leg, Stephanie. So other foot, right foot. Other way, bring it, for this one, bring it closer to the left leg. Make your foot touch your thigh. Good, two, three, and keep your right hand on the ground behind you, Stephanie. Yes, good, now really twist, good, four, both sits bones on the ground, and five, good, now release, inhale, cross your legs, lift up, grab your blocks, exhale, take it back or take Navasana, inhale, up dog, Exhale, down dog, bend your knees, jump through, straight legs, sit down, changing sides. So now on the left side. So once again, keep the right leg nice and flexed. So for this one, we're not out to the side, we're bringing it in. So don't rush too much when you're first learning this, all right? First, take that twist, right? Either hug the leg in, look over, or bring the leg out to the side and look over. If you're able to do the bind, you're internally rotating the leg, bringing it behind the back, catching your hand and taking that twist. If you're not there yet, no big deal. One, two, three, four, and five. Good, exhale, release. Cross your legs, inhale, lift up. I know you're getting tired, but keep that calm focus. Exhale, take it back. You got two more postures. Inhale, up dog. I got to plug my computer in. Okay, exhale, down dog. Okay, go plug it in quickly. We got two more postures before we close out. I thought it was plugged in, but it's not. Sorry about that. You're fine. All right. Marie Chauss in a D. So this is the one that people get obsessed with. This is an advanced posture. So jump through straight leg step. So let me show you guys. So D is just like B. So let me kind of show you a build up for this. So if you can pull the left leg in again, for those who can do that, you're going to pull it in, lift up. So again, the knee is touching the ground. Now that's the base. If the knee comes up, then once again, you're going to put your foot under your sits bone, just like with B. All right. Now this again is a twist. So once the base is set up, once the left foot is in, right sits bone is lifted, you're going to start your twist. You're either going to hug the leg in, Look behind the back or bring the arm to the outside of the leg. Look behind the back. If you're able to bind, you're bringing that right arm around, or left arm rather, around, and then catching the bind. Can we use binding towel for this? No. Binding, yeah. Just modify the twist. So that's an advanced posture, guys. So you're not going to probably get it right away. Stephanie, don't come up off the mat. Keep your oh, left I'm going to the wrong side, aren't I? Yeah, you need to do right side first. So left foot, so ladies, for your modification, left foot comes under the right sits bone, stand on that right leg, lift that right butt cheek up, but left one stays down. And then hug the leg in and take a twist. Look over your right shoulder. So don't try to push the twist too far, Steph, because that's going to cause an injury. One, and make sure your left uh, sits bone is on the ground. 
two. The right one is lifted, left one is down. Three, four, and five. Good release. Cross your legs. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend your knees, jump through, changing sides. So for most people, the modification, when they first start, especially to protect your knees, for your knees develop flexibility, bring the right foot under, left sits bone, stand on the left leg, and then just hug that leg in. Take a nice twist, the leg to the side. Don't try to rush it, though. When we rush it, that's our ego. One, just be with it. Two. Three. Four. And five. Now, in, or exhale, release. Grab your blocks. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, bend your knees, jump through. So this is Navasana. This is the middle part. This is the Path Primary Series mark. My teacher says that this is the most important posture in all of Primary Series. This is going to neutralize everything. Now, what is Navasana? It's the posture of navigation. So when we do Navasana, no bent knees because that's going to throw your back out. Legs are going to internally rotate together. They're touching straight. Reach past the legs. Whole body is active. Here we go. One, relax your face. Calm breathing. Two, good. That's so much better, Stephanie. Three, four, and five. Now cross your legs. All you're going to do to begin is cross your legs, hands by your side. I want you to lift up, pull your butt back, and then sit back down. Number two, legs up. They used to make us do handstands out of this. They don't do that anymore. Good. Legs up. Internally rotate. Glue them together. Reach past the legs. One, relax your face. Accept the predicament you are in. Here you are. That's two. Three. Yeah, your back's going to be a little uncomfortable in this because it's developing muscles. Four. That's all that is, is muscle development. And five. Good. Cross your legs. Hands by your side. Inhale. Lift your butt back. Pull it back. Exhale, butt down. Number three, you have three more to do. Legs up, point your toes, zip your legs together. Good, one, two, three, four, and five. Good, cross your legs, inhale, lift, pull your butt back two more times. Sit down, legs up, eyes to the toes. You're, this is, you're at the top of the mountain, right? You're at the top of the mountain. This is where the view is the prettiest. Uh-huh. One, good. This is easy for you. If this work, if you weren't meant to do this work, the work wouldn't be presented to you. That's two. Keep going. You got this. This is easy for you. Four, you both had babies. This is nothing compared to that. And five, good. Cross your legs. Inhale, lift your butt up. Last time. Legs up. You're neutralizing everything. You're engaging every muscle of your body. Legs up. Good. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Good. Cross your legs. Inhale. Lift up. Exhale. Take it back. Chaturanga. Last vinyasa for today. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, bend your knees, jump through, straight legs, sit down. All right, so we're going to do the three closing mudras, the three closing postures to close out the practice. Now, for those who are watching, that's only the first half of primary series. So we have the whole back half of primary series and the full closing and back bending sequence and closing that we haven't done today. But this is a great place to start for beginners. Now, um, with that being said, one of the keys we look at besides the hip mobility to give you the back half of premise, primary series is if you can do Navasana five times, no problem. Because that's the core strength needed to do the back half of primary series. So that's just something for you guys to understand what, what we're looking for when we give students more postures. All right. 
because there has to be safety, right? So if you're strong enough to hold the boss in a five times, no problem, then you're strong enough to do what's demanded in the back half of primary series. So with that being said, that's why I want people watching to understand this is why it takes years to develop this, okay? All right, closing mudra, so Bada Padmasana. So we're taking Padmasana, right foot comes in first and then the left foot. Now, if you can't do full Padmasana, you're just gonna pull your left foot on top or your left foot in front. This has to do with where your liver is in your body. All right, so from here, if you can reach around and catch your feet, reach around and catch your feet. If you cannot do that yet, just grab your elbows, exhale, fold, chin to the floor, five, uh, 10 breaths, one. This is the mudra of thanksgiving. Two, so giving gratitude to spirit, to God, to all of the gurus, which means to turn darkness into light. That's three. For thanking you of finding this practice to helping you get through this practice. Four, you don't find this practice by mistake. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Inhale, head up, keeping in your Padmasana position, Yoga Mudra Nava. So straighten your arms, spread your fingers apart, pull your chin in, bring your index finger and thumb together like a duck bill. So it's not this, guys. This is a very bad symbol. It is not this. My teacher in India gets so mad if you do this. It's this. It's this. All right, pull your chin in, deep breathing. This is the joining of God and man. Using that breath to calm down the nervous system. Okay, last posture, Utsplutsahi, levitation pose. Now, if you need, if you want to use your blocks, you can use your blocks. It's totally fine. You're going to bring your hands in between your knee and your hip bones, and you're going to lift up, look at your nose. Don't come down. Ten breaths. One, relax your face. Two, engage your core. Three, so Emmy, bring your uh, hands closer to me, closer to your knees. Yeah, there you go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, sit down. Most important of all for people practicing with us or watching at home, when you take your rest now, your resting posture, you're gonna turn around. So turn your body around to take rest. So turn around. Yeah, feet face the opposite direction. We do this because, ooh, yeah, Michael come in and watch this audio. We do this because we want to change the, the, the pattern of energy from our pra practice to now our post-practice. This is also not called Shavasana, okay? You will make an Indian teacher very upset if you call this Shavasana. This is called Sukhasana, the posture of rest. So lay, lie down. Now you can close your eyes. Palms face up, have your palms face up, close your eyes. I'm gonna keep them down just for a couple of minutes. You only wanna stay for about two minutes. I won't say. All right, ladies, come back to your breath. And then make your way up to a seated position on your mat. 
normally in a Mysore, you would be directing yourself into your resting position and out of your resting position. And in a lead class, the teacher actually leaves the room and you bring yourself out of the rest. So no poetry reading, none of, that, none of those bells and whistles. So ladies, um, I kind of realized we started practicing that people could be practicing along with us. That's why I went to a lot more workshoppy for people who wanted to be practicing along with us. Um, any final closing words to our friends watching us right now? I'm dying. It might look, it might look easy, but oh my gosh, you guys. So if, if you feel like you're dying, <laughs> you're doing it right. <laughs> you're doing it right. <laughs> Oh my lord. Well, that was so much. I will say we didn't record obviously last week. We just did it privately and that you guys your practice got so much cleaner in just a week. You think so? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I can lift my ass off the ground. <laughs> you're using like, your own body weight. I mean you're, you're you're literally lifting your own body weight. This is why people drop and I a lot of it. I'm a beefy girl. I got well, beef. Well, and you said something interesting, Stephanie, and I want to, uh, a few weeks ago, and I want to like point this out to people. You were like, I, you said, I can't remember what you said exactly, but I can't get over how much I'm sweating. And mm -hmm. we, I think we are really confused about sweat in the West. We think that in order to sweat and burn calories, we have to be doing cardio, but that's, well, you are doing a little cardio. Your heart rate is rising. Your heart rate should be up in this practice, but anytime you engage your muscles, that's what's going to cause the top is cause the sweat that's necessary. And that muscle engagement is what's actually moving the energy for you. So you always want to make sure that if you're going to a yoga class and you're not sweating, don't go back to that yoga class. That's tapas. It's a niyama. It's in the yoga sutras that you you're need gonna to sweat. feel like you pissed your pants, but it's your whole body pissing itself. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And you might feel like you're going to vomit. Oh, if you, yeah, if you vomit, you're going to that yeah. happens all the time. I, I've told the story before. There was one year I was practicing beside I had when you get moved. So in Mysore, India, we don't have you, you get assigned a time because there's so many people. And he moves his more advanced students to the first slot, which is means you have to get up at 2 a.m. And so at, with that being said, I always practice beside the same person at that time slot because we were the first group. And so this, this guy was practicing beside me. I don't know his name. He was Asian wasn't my best friend, Chris. It was this other guy. It was, this was at three 30 in the morning. And every time he would get to a particular posture, he would get up off. He would very calmly get up off of his mat, walk to the restroom. The men's restroom was right there. Marble floor. So you could hear everything. And he would start hurling. Nobody flinched in the Mysore room because we hear it all the time. It's no big deal. He would walk out calmly, get back on his mat. And all Shrat would say was, did you clean it up? And he would say, yes. You go, keep going. Every day, puked, same posture. I puked after my yoga practice two days ago. And then yesterday, um, when I got to the twisting, the last five sequences, right? Oh, I perfect. just, two, well, it was on the left side I twisted and it just released something. And I, I, I'm, I think it's because we were filming today. But when I'm by myself, I actually hold some of the postures even a little bit longer to really dig into them. Well, let's talk about that because that can happen sometimes, but sometimes people will do that to avoid the work. So let's talk. I was intuitively doing this. I don't trust me. I don't want to hold the poses for more than two breaths, but this was, I, oh, it's, it's, it's five was breaths. Possible. You're holding each posture for five yeah. breaths. But I dug into one of them and I, I released something. So and now, I started there's a science behind why we go so fast with them. It's because the in and out of the posture is actually going to pull up more. It's going to suction cup up more. So that's okay. I, there's some postures I'll hold for like seven breaths. In yeah, my it practice. wasn't like 10 breaths. Right? It was like six or seven breaths. And um, it really is something out of me and I just was waterworks for the rest yeah. of the entire practice. But for everybody watching right now, I want you to be careful with that because that is, and if you feel like you get to a point where you're slowing it down so much where your heart rate drops and you can start to get cold, then you got to speed it up. And the reason why we want to do that point. Yeah. Was people will do that. People will do that. So what we're, what we're doing too is 
we're keeping the mind on a meditation. So when we slow it down, sometimes the mind gets off the meditation. And also, so after Navasana, when you start learning the back half of primary series, you have a posture called Bhujapidasana, then you have Kurmasana, then you have Supta Kurmasana, then you have Garbhapindasana, and then Kugutasana. These five postures are extremely advanced postures one after the other. So Bhujapidasana, you're literally jumping from down dog, wrapping your legs around your arms, pulling them in and pulling your chin to the mat without anything touching the mat, and then inhale lifting up. Uh, Supta Kurmasana, you're jumping your legs over your arms, lying down with the legs over. And then the next posture, you're putting the legs behind your head. And so when we start to slow down the heat, we lose the endorphins too. And so when we get to that family of postures, that's immediately after Navasana, if we've slowed down those endorphins or slowed down that heat, the body's not going to go into those postures. So we are preparing you. We're preparing everything. And so the half primary series on its own can be its own practice, complete practice. However, it is also preparing you for the back half of primary series. So there's a reason why this is this, um, this particular sequencing has been done for thousands of years. There's a reason why everything is done. It's not just for shits and giggles. It's, 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 it's developing some patterning in your body. That's then going to take you to a new level of patterning. Right. And then when you get to sex, so what happens too, is after you finish primary series and you start working into second series, there comes a point where you're doing all of primary series and then half a second. So you have like a two hour practice. And then when you get to a, and when you start doing second series, all of a sudden the primary series starts to crumble again, things get tighter and weird again. So you have to rework it while working second. And then once it's clean up to there and you move past the middle point of second series, then you drop primary. Same thing with third. You're doing all second series and you start adding third in. It's the same thing. And so the ebbing and weaving of the way these postures work isn't just once you get it, you get it, it's done. It's a tango. It's a, it's a constant dance. It's a constant change, you know? And so just be very careful. If you're practicing at home, just be very careful of where you are. And we talked about it yesterday. I mean, the artful dodger. It's what David, it's, it's when you're cheating, but you don't realize you're cheating. You're, it's your subconscious, right? And so that's why I'm so glad we were talking about these things because this is the format that teachers have to hold for students. Now, yes, in a Mysore environment, like, like that took us a long time. That took us like an hour and a half to get through half primary series because Emmy and Stephanie are new and the people watching are new. I do full primary in an hour but I've done it for 16 years. Right. And so I know it, I know it, my body knows it, right. It's I've been through the relationship. Listen, asanas, the posture practice in myself, we have had a very love hate relationship. We need there. Like we've, we've had to go through therapy, couples therapy, you know, <laughs> like, um, so, so I know every, you know, and that's, and that's the thing too. Like you start to realize the more you do this practice, like when you do make the mistakes, of like maybe staying too long in, a, in, a, in one posture and then cheating another. And then all of a sudden something falls apart in another posture. Then that's when you go, oh, I get to like um, Banchu, who's a teacher in Thailand that I love. He's his, his videos on his Instagram of his classes are beautiful the way that he does them. But um, he always says the leg classes are your checkup. It's your checkup to see where you're cheating, where you're cheating things. So, so yeah, if you're going to hold the postures for longer, I would only hold for like seven breaths, nothing more, and then move on. Cause then the body's going to start to slow down. It's going to get, get kind of cramped into it and not have that free flow. Yeah. So yeah, seven breath, five breaths is how long you hold it. Seven breaths max. If you want to hang out for a couple extra breaths, if you hang out on one side for extra breaths, so you most definitely have to hang out on the other side for the extra breath too. So don't hang out one side for longer than the other, because that's going to cause massive imbalance. That makes sense though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you ladies want to bring up before we. I'm going to go get, get my coffin and dig a hole now. Mm. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> but it's hard. It looks easy, but it's not. And just be patient with yourself because. It takes years to do this. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why I'm so glad, glad, glad uh, I'm so grateful for you ladies for doing this. And because there's no point, there's literally no point in me doing primary series for people. There's no point. I've done it for 16 years. So I thank you guys for doing this because this is what a Mysore room looks like. Thank you for the shit show. <laughs> It's a hot mess we are. <laughs> it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess express for everyone. It's always, I tell students all the time, it's a, most yoga is a flop shop. Yeah. Can you all see my hair? I don't know. It's wet. Yeah. And it's not water. It's all sweat. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah. Good. You did it right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you vomit, you release. Okay. There's going to be poses that you just, just, I hate the standing poses. I hate everything standing, but I like the sitting. That's where my comfort is. So obviously I have to work a lot more on standing. Well, I was saying this, I don't know if I was saying this to Emmy or you guys last week, but the weird thing about when your body starts to shift to change postures, you hate now you're going to love later imposters you love now you're going to hate later and i'll give i think i gave this example last week but the second posture of second series is a posture um it's a lot like Tyrion muka ikapata paschimottanasana so it's a lot like the posture in primary where one leg's back and one leg is extensive it's extend extended right but in second series the second posture of second series the leg has to come up like this and pull the chin in. Now, when I first started practicing second series series, that was one of my favorite postures. Now I fucking hate that posture. I hate it so much. So, um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so you're gonna, you're gonna have postures that you love and hate, love and hate, hate, love, love and hate. And then it's going to change when, when your body, body, and now you guys, girls noticing changes in your body too. Oh Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot more upper body strength than I think I ever have in my entire life besides when I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, I could do a headstand for 20 minutes straight, no problem. And I was very flexible and I was very, I was like, um, so I was an athlete as a kid. Um, but even then, I, I didn't, I've never really had a lot of upper body strength. And like, I've always had thicker arms, thicker shoulders. I've always been, it's all, all the muscle and all the strength has always been in my legs. I'm seeing a shift though. So I'm noticing like, especially even in the last week, like using the blocks and everything and really focusing on lifting myself. As you can see, there is no uh, eloquency of me lifting myself up and in kickback because that's going to take years, obviously. But I can definitely lift my butt off the ground where even last week I was having a heart. Did it look like I could lift myself even more so than last week? A little bit better. Yeah. You both got very cleaner. And I will say something about he headstands though. They're not, it's not upper body strength for a headstand. Yeah, I know. It's core and legs. So my core was, oh, my core was a lot better when I was a kid. And obviously life throws at you traumas and guess where it goes. And of course, if you're not working it, you know, Steph and I, we were talking about this yesterday on the phone, like what starts to happen? Cause you kind of had some breakthroughs and your and your thought patterning, which is what we're really we're really looking through for breakthroughs in the thought patterning. That's why we're using the body because they're connected. And you had a breakthrough with something, and you asked me if it was the yoga. I won't say what it is, but I said no, it's not the yoga. The yoga is just a tool. You realized something. Your thought patterning changed on something because a lot of us, most of us, at some point, bought into the matrix. At some point, we all bought into the brainwashing and we allowed ourselves to be brainwashed, you know, and we allowed ourselves to believe that we had these limitations. We have a Robbie, butt. we have a Robbie, butt. yeah. Hey buddy. He's the main teacher. He gets so pissy. If you try to do, if you come into this house and you try to do vinyasa flow, Robbie will bark at you until you stop. Like if you fuck around with vinyasa flow, he gets pissy. But if you do Ashtanga, he'll lay on his mat and sleep. <laughs> he's, the, he's the guru aren't you buddy are you, hey bubby are you the guru he's from india if you guys don't know my dog is from india so he was found outside of the shala as a puppy in india so he's he's we say he 
a little bobblehead. <laughs> He's the guru. Ravi G. Ravi G. Um, so, yes, he agrees with me. So, um, so anyway, yes. So that's what's happened. That's what happened to Steph. She had a breakthrough because something in her mind switched. You can say what it is. I don't care. You, you, oh, you were able to see better. I was able to drive without glasses for the first time in my entire life. Yeah. And she asked me if it was the yoga. And I said, no, which I want to say that's not, it's not the yoga. The yoga is not, this is, I suddenly could see, like, it's the weirdest thing ever is I was like, I, I, I was so cheerful yesterday after my practice. And I talk about this all the time. I don't cry very often, but yesterday was just like that little breakthrough I had during the practice. I was just waterworks yesterday. The littlest thing I was like, what is wrong with me? And I'm driving home from the grocery store. I had to wipe my eyes and I'm like, what in God's green earth? Like literally, and all the colors were brighter. No, and I was not tripping out on shrooms. <laughs> I was not. Shrooms won't fix that either. So no. it's, it's, it was bright. Like everything was super bright and I could see, I could see road signs. I've been wearing glasses since I was 12. And I was like, oh my God. I get, and, and here I am crying even more because I can see. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get so attached to these labels that the medical industry has given us. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. Oh, woe is me. I have this. And I was saying to Stephanie, it's something I've never said to you before, but you know, that's all made up, right? There's a reason why diseases are named after people. It's all made up. It's, it's make-believe. Yeah. There's no such, really, there's no such thing as arthritis, something I've struggled with. Emmy and I both were diagnosed fibromyalgia, right? So, I mean, yeah. like I, I, two years ago, I was looking at possibly walking with a flipping cane because I literally, I could not walk. I wish I had my YouTube channel then so people can go back. But if you do go back, you can see that the even the texture of my skin was like off. Like my coloring was off. I looked mm -hmm. almost like half dead kind of. There you was guys like, remember that picture I showed you? Yeah. Of myself before my skin was gray. Well, yeah. let's talk you know about exactly what, what you're talking about. Yeah. This is why Stephanie figured this out and she had this breakthrough in her thought. And I said that to you because I never, I don't think I've ever said that to you before. Like, no, it's all make believe. There's no such thing as arthritis. It's just your body, your bones get brittle because there's anxiety. It's anxiety. It's not arthritis. There's no such thing as fibromyalgia. But what they do is they hypnotize you to believe. When it I makes you more sick, the more you think about your sickness. And you think you're a victim to it. You think you're yeah. a slave to it. The moment you take hold and you break through those chains of disease and say, no, I'm healthy. Well, diseases, and all diseases, all diseases means is dis-ease. It just means imbalance. That's all it means is imbalance. And if someone comes to me as a teacher and they're so sold that something is wrong with them, that they have some sickness, I can't do anything for them. They're wasting their time. Yeah. Because they're using that label as a crutch when it doesn't exist to begin with. It just doesn't exist. Like when I hear when someone tells me they have fibromyalgia, all I see is, oh my God, they've been through trauma. Yeah. It's not a medical condition. There is no such thing as medical conditions. It's all energetic body. It's all your soul is trying to tell you something through your body. And the minute you make that realization, the minute you realize that, everything shifts. Doesn't mean you're not, doesn't mean you're not gonna have aches and pains. Of course you are. If you have a human body, you're always gonna be dealing with your nervous system. Well, when always. you're detoxing too, you're gonna ache. I've been aching all week. I know you, Emmy, have been in a lot of pain all week. Yeah. We've been in a lot of pain all week because we're literally detoxing yep. too. And our body is rebuilding itself. So and how many people in this practice have gotten to that point where you ladies are, where you're in that much pain because you're detoxing and they quit because they thought something was wrong. To me, that's like a, no, let's do this more. We got to get to that. We got to get to that mindset. Let's do this more. I got to keep going. It means it's working. Yeah. But we've been, but the cabal, the controllers have trained us to die early. Yeah. By believing these lies. Listen, I'm, I'm living to like 500. Okay. <laughs> well, and we talked about the Emmy. You look at people in the yoga world. I mean, and I'll say it. I, I might sound like an asshole for saying this, but if you look at Ashtanga practitioners, like if you look at, group, at a group of authorized teachers, they're really pretty people. Very aesthetically beautiful people. 
It's because they were doing their practice though. That's the, the thing. Guys are, the guys have beautiful oh. nose. Oh my God. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Yoga bodies on men. Exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> those yoga stomachs on oh men are hard as a rock and they're very they can move girls they can move they're not like oh, swollen huh oh can they now yeah they got some hip action let me just tell you <laughs> it's a very small community i've dated a lot of them so <laughs> let's see let's see we're, we're gonna we're gonna explain this to the audience in a way that they can understand what Bryce is talking about here where is it hold on I'm gonna get to it in a second I mean that's just that's my well, that's first of all first of all this is what starts first okay now oh a little bit of this you get that tapas that heat going you're all sweaty oh wait Benisa cups <laughs> I mean, they know how they know how to hold themselves, so they don't dump their body weight on you. Like it's it's a, uh, and I like the I like the yoga body. I like the long lean muscles. I'm not a woman that's ever like the bulky, like swollen, like Jersey guys. Like you know, like they can't move. Yeah. yeah, and then you can sit and talk about life with them. You can talk about philosophy with them. It's not like it's a wham bam thank you ma'am. Like they can lay there with you at, and talk about like human suffering and I'm cold. Yeah, the sweat. So yes, guys, if you're watching, and I, I only know three gay men in this practice. Most of the men, most of the teachers, there are 50, there are 50 certified. So I'm authorized. There are 500 of us who are authorized. There are 50 certified. Certified means you've lived in India for like over 10 years and you finish like most of the advanced series. It's, it's a lot. There are 50 people in the world who are certified. Only, only 17 of them are women. That's how many men are in this practice because it's a very, but all those bodies, their muscles just like glisten. And all right, men, time to bust out. And a lot of them are, have tattoos. Be a woman magnet. And when you're in <laughs> India and you're kind of there with them for months in India together and. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're vegetarians like they'll, they'll eat the smoothie with you like so um they have like no body fat whatsoever i mean it's beautiful bodies so <laughs> hey we're still human even though we're doing this practice when i now when i teach i don't as we're and i and i'll serious note when i teach i don't even think about that like that is not even i only look at my own peers in that way <laughs> Not my students. No, Bryce. All my only, only my peers. So, all right, and everybody got a taste of our our asses, Emmy, when we were doing that bending over. Oh yeah, it's like it goes back to that one episode we did with Taylor back in January, Bryce. We we're talking about levitation sex. You know, everybody's boobs out in the air, ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone's gonna be doing yoga at that point. So. <laughs> That's right. all it is, everybody. Well, I hope you guys watching enjoyed that. <laughs> so, um, thank you, ladies, so much for being such good sports about that. And and um and I, again, I realized as we started, hell, people watching could just join in and practice with us if they wanted to practice at your own risk. Stop if you really, I really, really again, get yourself a teacher. There's nothing that beats having a teacher. So, um, anyway, ladies. I'm going to go ahead and sign us off because it's been about two hours now. So anyway, <laughs> I love you ladies. Love you guys. Bye, Later. Bye everybody.